How much wood could a woodchuck chuck if a woodchuck could chuck wood? Answer seriously, answer sarcastically. <coughs> 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 Good day everyone and welcome back. My name is Ordinary Ollie and today we are going to be continuing Derek's story in March of the Living. And last time we made it to this safety camp or whatever, except it wasn't that safe and everyone here is dead. So I can see our hunger is going up a little bit, so let's eat something and then we will continue our journey with our lovely wife who is sadly infected, our main character Derek and our tag along Tara who joined us in the last video and we are gonna reach the soldier in distress call that we got from this camp so we are gonna go travel along the road in this zombie apocalyptic world god forsaken land you begin to hear the faint sound of engine noise in the distance spinning around you can scan the, you scan the horizon behind several motorbikes with armed riders are speeding directly towards you there are two ways this scenario could end, at least two ways I've experienced with the last characters that we played the game with. And as either they're friendly, or they'll shoot at you. And if you're friendly, we can flag them down and ask for this is this assistance. Um, I want to try that. As the bikers draw near, you start trying to catch their attention and they begin to slow down. Within seconds, they draw their weapons and the leader tells you to hand over all your food to die. So yeah, these were the unfriendly bikers. Give them one ration and pretend you don't have any more. Give them all your food or fight them. The only guy who's really good with the gun is Derek. Our wife, she was pretty badass in the last video. Um, but let's give them one ration and then pretend we don't have any more. You grudgingly hand over a piece of food to the bikers. They seem to be content with your offering and let out a roar of laughter before speeding off in the distance. Uh, fuck you then. And we will continue. We only lost one food. And we had nine, so it it's okay. Just stop making bad decisions from now on, Ollie, and then we will be fine. Upon reaching the location the soldier gave you, you find a man in uniform fighting a group of infected. As he notices you and your wife, he shouts, You must be the folks from Cam Murphy. I'm low on ammo and I need your help. Help the soldier. You want towards Sergeant Brody to provide assistance. Okay, Sergeant. We are here. We are queer. No. <laughs> No, we are not. Not that there's anything wrong with that, of course. And it seems to have gotten myself into deep water. Everyone can um, be with the gender they wish to be with. No harm. So, we got that uh, sorted out. And we can continue the game without anyone sounding like a, a bigot in any sort of way. Hopefully. Uh, are we going to kill them soon? Out of bullets. Then you should reload, right? Maybe that's a good idea. Okay, Tara, now take out that there. And our wife, she can take out that guy there. Is, is, is our, oh, he it doesn't have any ammo, that's why he's not shooting. Holy shit, we shot that guy. Oh, was that the soldier? <laughs> okay, a quest marker has been added to your map. Thanks, Sergeant Brody says. Unfortunately, my man didn't survive his last attack. Brody says it with a little emotion. There is sadness in his eyes. That, that's how you show sadness in your eyes. <laughs> <laughs> we should get moving right away. The camp we were taking the scientist to, Camp Pandora, is quite far away, and the time is a precious resource. That is true. So everyone just... Oh, okay, so Brody joined us now. Oh, that's cool. Hi, Brody. You're probably expert in everything, right? Pistol expert, shotgun expert, rifle expert. Sergeant Brody offered to take you and your wife to scientists working on a cure. This might be the only chance to save your wife. I will add that in the last uh, uh, the last stories with the other characters, we did find a cure both times, and uh, with the one character, we handed it over to the right group um, that was looking for the cure because uh, another group that was dying found us, or we found them, gave us the cure to protect, and then we found the other group and delivered the cure to them because they were the ones who were supposed to take the cure from the other group, but didn't make it. So, we didn't try the cure there, but in the first one, the story with Greg, the first March of the Living I played, um, we did try the cure on ourselves because we got infected and it did nothing. 
So, I mean, that I, I just wanted to add that. And then let's just travel a little bit on. I see that, oh, we need to go all the way down to Camp Pandora in Sector 2. We're in Sector 1. We are where the green uh, mark is there. And we need to make it all the way down there. And I don't want to make the videos too long. Because in the first story, I did that. That each time I did something in the game, I, of course, oh, shit, locked it. And uh, made a video about it. But in the next story, I did something a little bit different where I just, the most important parts, I mean like if I travel to Camp Pandora, then I would end the video soon. I'm gonna end, and they're gonna do that too. That's, and that's why I'm telling you this. I'm gonna travel a little bit more on, then I'm gonna end the video. Then I am gonna travel closer to Camp Pandora. And when I'm close to that, I will show you guys what happens there again. So you don't have to watch like the boring travel up until then. Because yeah, something small might happen. You know, like we get another group member, we'll find some ammunition or one of us will maybe die. I don't know. Um, but that's a lot more fun than sitting and making like 20 videos for just one story that you can boil down with all the exciting parts in like five or six videos. So I'm going to do that. But we are going to travel a little bit more on and see what we find in Derek's story until I end this video. After another long lek of your trip, you decide to take a break in a small clearing. Smoldering campfires nearby cause you to think that perhaps you aren't alone. As soon as that thought passes through your mind, a pair of figures appear. Curiously, they seem to be carrying film equipment. Hey you, one of them, the camera, op uh, uh, <laughs> the camera operator waves to you. We need to ask you something important. The internet is going to see this, so think carefully. One, agree to the interview. Two, refuse to be recorded. Or three, shoot him. We are gonna agree to the interview, so because why not? Why not? Why not be you know friendly and 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 loving towards your next character? How much wood could a woodchuck chuck if a woodchuck could chuck wood? Answer seriously. Answer sarcastically. <coughs> <coughs> Oh my god, that voice is, uh, could you even, I'm not sure, could, could you even tell what I was saying? If, if not, you probably read it yourself, but still, it was fun. Um, it's a, it's a really sarcastic question, so answer sarcastically. <laughs> you decide to be playful with your words and give the most flowery, overblown answer you're capable of that subtly insults them. The interviewers, for their part, are entertained, oh, that's cool, and reward you for participating with them rifle bullets good uh oh and brody has a rifle so it couldn't be better map let's travel a little bit on. i want to find a city because we could really do for scouting for some things let's all rest while i try and think what we should do next should probably find a city um but the nearest city is all the way down there so, and we need to travel all the way down to the city, because we'll probably find some exciting stuff down there. You spot a group of armed soldiers marching in line towards you. An HMMWV light truck following closely their tracks. Holstering your weapon, you flag down the leader and ask where they're headed. He tells you that they are US Army troops, operating separately from the US Marines stationed further east, and that they are marking out infected villages for destruction by the UASF. We do our best to get rid of the worst hordes, but some slip through our grasp, so be careful, he says. You consider asking them for more details, but decide against it. The soldiers part ways and head back on their warpath, as do you. Move on. So, we will travel further on down towards the city. Going down to the city where we belong. You're taking a hike through the forest when you come across the carcass of an unfortunate slain deer. Taking a quick examination, you discover a pair of crossbow bolts lodged in his head. There doesn't appear to be any other visible wounds, at least on the sides you can see. Set up a place to cook the deer. Leave the deer alone. Let's leave the deer alone. Uh, and you decide to leave the deer where it is and move onwards. Better to play it safe than mess with wild food. That is true, because I don't want to eat something that is maybe infected, and I think that maybe the meat could be infected. And I don't want to eat something that is someone else's because then they'll shoot at you and you will get hurt. Shit. Oh, okay. Oh, it's like a small group coming from behind. I thought it was like seven zombies or something coming from behind. It's only two. And they're cute zombies. I mean, they don't do any harm. And they're easy to take out. I mean, won't you? If, if our good, good expert rifleist apparently could just hit them that would be awesome of course but if you can't hit them then how the hell are we supposed to kill them uh no 
Oh shit! Now R is grappled. Um, Derek, Derek, you need, you need, you need to push, push him away. Use the axe. Use the axe and then push, push him. Oh, I just shoot him. Thanks, wife. <laughs> Betty to the rescue. Without a blanket, and travel on. You begin walking alongside a deteriorated railroad running east. A short while into this leg of your journey, you happen across a lone cab from what you assume is a diesel locomotive. This intrigues you, so you climb up inside and take a look around. Climb inside the cab. The interior of the train cab is a mess. It seems like the unfortunate driver was shot where he sat in the back of the head. His brain is blown out across the control panel. Delicious. A decently sized bullet hole all but confirms this story. You shove the corpse aside and check the controls. Your best guess is that it seems to be in working order, though the fuel gauge is reading very low. Try and start the train. I think the train will actually start because I think we've taken it once before. But I don't. If you take the train, it'll just drive you in some random direction, and and I don't want that because it it it'll do worse than actually just walking. You could fiddle with all the knobs and circuits for hours and never figure out how the train works. You decide it's not worth the effort, so you jump off the train and start walking again. Whew. And we are really close to the city now. We are only just one tile away, so we will reach the city here. And I will go to sleep. Sleepsies in uh, appointmentsies that is uh, decently cozies for us to sleepsies in. Now we sleep. Now we don't. We don't eat yet. And then we scavenge for some food. Oh, we do not have any food. Food is of the essence right now. Hospital. Search the shit out of that place. You know, make it scream. Just do whatever you can. Of course, we get an encounter here. Uh, 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 and uh, uh, everybody move a little bit forward and you know Derek you have the shotgun thingy locked down so you you take out the group behind us or at least keep them at bay then we've got Tara and we've got our wife Betty to take out these two and then our soldier guy Brody can slowly take out the zombies coming from behind as the others are kept back. Bandage and a wallet. At least that's something. Everyone reload. Goody guys. Nice tactics. Good teamwork. No no map yet. Grocery store. There's a lot of food in that place, hopefully. Let's search it. And we can really do for some pistol bullets also. I noticed that we have zero left. Um you know what, Derek? You you'll keep these guys at bay with a lot of shotgun bullets. That's the stuff. And as you do that, Brody will just take out the last guy. Boom! And we're done. 11 food rations. Score! And drugstore. They maybe have some food also. Sometimes they do. Sometimes they only have medicine. I'm not sure, but let's give it a try. Same tactics here, right? Uh, keep these at bay behind, actually. And then, as you do that, Brody can maybe take out one of these. He can take out both of them, maybe. That's one. That's a two. Antibiotics. It's not much, but it is something. Um, hmm? Scavenge on. Police station. We gotta search the shit out of that place, too, because we are running low on bullets. Holy shit. We are not this lucky today, and we need to eat some food afterwards, I see, because we are... Uh, we are hungry, that's the word. Oh, keep these by bay first. Nice one. Oh, you are out of bullets. That that's 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 some shit. That's not cool. That's definitely not cool. Uh we need to take all these. Uh Derek. These two guys. Uh Birdie. You need to uh body shot these guys. And then this even here. That's this. yes. Awesome job. Shotgun shells, rifle bullets, and a baseball bat, you know, when you're just looking to make a home run. Everyone eat, and then we scavenge on, full on, in the apartments. And that is the last place. Maybe we're lucky? No encounter. Good. And cigarettes. If you meet a barter, cigarettes, they are like gold. They're even more worth than gold, I think. And we made it through there, so now let's just travel a little bit out of the city and back towards the road. And we should be done. 
Oh, cries of agony attract your attention from just over a rise in the road where you spot a man sitting down. You move closer but suddenly halt as you realize that past the bump, the road is completely lined with small sharp wooden stakes. And not only that, the man's body has been impaled by the stakes in several places. Feet, hands, buttocks, just looking at the pain this man is in makes you cringe. Try to lift the man out, put the man out of his misery, leave. If we try to lift the man out because we've had this scenario before, we will get hurt. We will lose 1 HP and we will figure out that we can't get him out and if we got him out it would kill him because of blood loss. So sadly number 3 put him out of his misery and with all one well are aimed round to the cranium you put the unfortunate soul out of his misery. You hope no one else befalls the same fate. It's sad but at least he is at peace now and we can reload because he cost us one bullet. Um, well, thank you guys for watching this video. I am gonna end it here. You can check out the previous part of Derek's story in the description just below the video. And if you want to check out some of my other videos, you can do that all throughout the channel. And there are a lot of different videos for you to watch. But the most important part is thank you for watching this video. If you want to subscribe, that would be awesome. If you want to like the video, that would also be awesome. And if you want to eat some cake after this video, that would be awesome too. Um, so, thanks for watching, and bye-bye.